Okay, so we've got our pouch ready to go. We've got our side strip, and we've got the front of our pouch. So the idea is the full assembly, right? Lays out like this. And we've got to start sewing a whole bunch of parts together. And ironically, the last thing you get to sew is the front side and back portions all as one piece. So really, you got to figure out how to get your bearings because there's a whole bunch of components we may want to stitch to the back of our part. You've got to figure out where to start. So you got to nail down some variables. So we've got our paper template and our leather piece, and that's a good starting point. So what we need to do is we need to fold our paper template in half so that we can define that center line that we're going to have to stitch. And then what we want to do is take our grease pen and just use that. So I'm pressing down so my paper template matches my leather template. And I'm just making a small index mark where the middle is. So you can see that the seam is lining up with the middle of the leather and we're satisfied with that. And so at this point, we're going to use the grease pen just to mark that line clearly so it's defined as we transfer everything over to our back piece. So one thing you want to consider when you take our strap mount and attach it to our pouch is we need to make sure that you know, it's going to have enough room <laughs> for the strap itself to fit through, right? And so I'm using the ruler as a mock-up for what the strap's going to be like because it's nice and rigid. So you know that if we pin this material down, right, the strap mount down, and we pin the opposite side down, the leather itself gets a little bit shorter. So we know that if we want this perimeter on the edges, to match the perimeter on the bottom, we're going to have to move our back component where our straps attach down closer to the bottom so when we stitch it, it moves up. Okay. And one of the interesting things is if you're ever not sure whether your leather is aligned, what I'll do is I'll give it a, just a gentle tackling and check and make sure that that still looks on center. And if it doesn't, as we see, on this edge, we know we want to take a measurement and make sure that we weren't off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure one side, and that is 20, 30 seconds. So 1 and 20, 30 seconds, and this side measures at 1 and... 16 30 seconds so we know that the line actually needs to move over just a little bit and that is a byproduct if you look closely this is my mark this is where I drew my line let's look at that in focus right. this is my mark this is where I drew the line so you always want to check and make sure because if you're not pressing down firmly when you draw your line you end up with a little bit of air, and that's fine with the grease pencils, but what you want to do is make sure it's right before you take the chisel and start hammering in all those details, okay? So now we know that dot is our center index, okay? So we take our part, and we're going to line it so that the sides and the bottom have similar perimeters, but the bottom is slightly shorter than the sides. And you can do that visually, or you can do that with the ruler. I tend to do it visually just because you're looking for the visual aesthetic, and so the, the math and precision may not necessarily be there to give you the information you need. So I'm going to mark the purple leather with my grease pen, making sure it's indexed the same. And uh, it may not show up well with this lighting because it is shiny, but that's okay. There we go. 
And so we know we need to go slightly beyond our original part because threading is going to tag down just outside the edge to prevent it from flopping around. So that's what we need to know. We're going to chisel in this line first and then once it's stitched in place, we will determine where these chisel lines need to go. Okay. We know that we need a chisel line on the straight perimeter, but when we translate it to the purple, it's going to be inset just a small amount. Okay, so once you've cut all of your chisel lines into your stitching pouch, so this is the back part that attaches to the straps, you just want to make sure to wipe off any excess grease pen that's there. It's easier to do it when it's flat than when you have stitch lines and it's all pooped out from um, being pulled tight. And I want to point out now, before we get started, that the purple portion of the pouch has two more stitching holes than the black portion of the pouch. Okay, so these two parts are similar but slightly different because an extra piece of thread has to go on the outside edge. Get that in focus. On the outside edge and through the purple piece in order to lash it down firmly. Okay, so you're always doing your piece you're attaching, which has a certain number of holes and the piece you're attaching it to may have two plus holes cut into it depending on how you're doing the attachment. If you're just butting them up edge to edge like so, it's a one to one ratio. But if you're going one piece on top of another and they're different sizes, the larger piece will generally have at least two more holes to tighten it down. All right. So why does that matter? Well, when you go to thread your <laughs> needle, the first thing you do is you find that outermost hole on the larger piece. And then you try and get both your needles pulling the thread to the same length. And then from there, you're going to thread through the edge of your first piece, like so and into the second hole of the larger piece, the purple piece, okay? And you're gonna pull that down relatively tight, making sure that it's in fixed position, and then push through the same hole where the threading's coming out. And this is where it starts to get a little tricky because you gotta make sure the needle goes through one part and then the same hole that the first needle entered. And once you get that done, you can suck down the stitch with a light pull, and then it's just back and forth. All right, so you can see the one needle coming out one side, and the second needle is entering where the first needle left. And you'll get a pretty good rhythm down, so it'll go fairly quickly. But just know it's one of those things where you have to keep track of which needle came out where and then use that as a guidepost for where you're going to put the next needle. And so being the lazy person that I am, I prefer stitching on the colored side just because the black thread is very obvious to see. But when you're trying to find your guide hole, if you can start on the darker side, it'll make your life easier if that's your leading needle, right? because once you see the black thread come out of the purple, it's nice and contrasting. It's easy to see, but when it's... I, I made the mistake of stitching together a wonderful water buffalo bag, but it was all black on black, and finding the holes for the slotting and the thread was a little tricky. So at this point, we're going to switch to time-lapse and finish it up. Well, joke's on me. 
time lapse didn't record. <laughs> so we're at the point where we've stitched the full run. Okay. Both sides, we've got a nice seam line. And sometimes you'll find you have an extra hole, sometimes you'll find you need to punch an extra hole. But usually when I get to this point, what I'll do while I can, is I'm going to pierce halfway through and tie my knot. So I want the needle to come through the black piece of leather, but not all the way through to the purple, like so. Okay, And then I'll come through the purple piece as well. Again, not all the way through to the black piece, and I'll tie my knot. And that's just going to allow a nice hard stop so you know your stitch line is tight and it's not somewhere that's going to get enough general abrasion that your threading may untie. And then from there you can take whichever one you'd like back through the opposite color and just weave your thread into the rest of your stitch work. So you go back maybe three or four stitches and then at that point you can cut it off Come here. the hardest part about this i'll find is after i've been doing a lot of stitching on a hot day my fingers get waxy <sighs> and then i will resort to a little piece of rubber stripping that i have like it's part of a bike tire or car inner tube, I don't know, but it's a thick piece of rubber that allows you to keep a grip on your needle while you're stitching after a long day. It's like the equivalent of having a thimble, but for your pinchy finger instead of your pushy finger. So what I'll do is I'll just finish going back through a couple of strokes and I'll tie one last knot. Again, split between the two. And tie it off. So pretty straightforward process except for the missing time-lapse bit. That's it.